episode of the Landscurve Show podcast. I hate to number things, but I'll call this one number seven. Keep things in order. But look at that. Ever since we started calling our evening shows or giving them numbers, we're already up to number seven. It's almost like the rooftop perspectives series that we do. We're already going up near 70, 66, 67. And that shows you how fast time flies. And that's in keeping with the kind of general conversation I want to have tonight. I'm very relaxed. After this, I will admit that I will be turning in. And I kind of like the flow because it's very cerebral and very nocturnal. And after the day is over. So, you know, there are a lot of things that wanted me to or pointed me in the direction of, of speaking on this topic because I'm always one that's trying to be a little different. You know, if everybody's going left, I'm going to go right. If everybody's going right, I'm going left. I've always been that person. I've, I've noticed that even many decades ago when I started working and driving, I would always work night jobs. And when I was coming home, the highway was open because when I was coming home, everybody else was going to work and it was a traffic jam on the other side. Have you ever experienced that? Well, I have. It seems like that's been the statement of my life that I've always been one who thought outside the box, always wanted to see the abstract, always wanted to sometimes and oftentimes be labeled as the weird one. But as I've been labeled weird most of the time, after a time, people are like, you're onto something, you know? So me being eccentric is a way of life for me. Let me lower this table a little bit. And instead of stand up, I'm gonna treat myself to sitting down. And these tables are a wonderful thing. You push a button and it drops down real low. Let me pull my chair up here so we can, so we can really get down. You know, we're still on a band. So these particular programs, it doesn't have the excitement of the times when you go live. And it's kind of a relief for me because it's, it's the feel for me is halfway between a monologue that's recorded. And for the few that are here, whoever you are, wherever you are, I haven't even looked at the other chat rooms and I don't really expect anybody to be here like that. We have a few and that's good enough for me. So I'm just going to pull my feelings out for the times when we upload this, when we go onto YouTube, but everything that we do will be done on the site. And there are going to be some harsh differences that are just as satisfying, but we have to form new habits in order to make things, you know, right. And to get the message out because we can't be scattered all over the place and try to get a message out. We can't have our mind all over the place as a people and hope to get ourselves up on our feet. And really and truly, when we speak of ourselves as a people, this is 2022, y'all. We should not be thinking about just merely getting up on our feet. We should be running things and we should be running our lives, right? I just have to share uh, a conversation that I had a little while ago because I, uh, on this particular street that I live on, there's several small shops and it's so convenient. And after a while, when you go to the small shops, people get to know you, they get to talk with you. They get to ask you questions. Oh, you know, how's, how's your wife or, or, or how's everything going? I saw the, the YouTube video that you did. I loved it. You know, uh, why don't you talk about this? Or why don't you talk about that? So there's a particular young lady who is a school teacher who in the daytime, She's not here. Her daughter is running it. And I don't know what kind of school arrangement that she has with her daughter because her daughter is of school age, but I think she gets homeschooled, something along those lines. But she's at the shop every day. And the mother is a teacher and she's gone all day. And then she comes in the evening and takes over. And I think that's when the daughter gets homeschooled. Well, that being said, we've gotten into a lot of conversations and her uh, awareness and intelligence level is through the roof and her awareness of the world. And it's very interesting to see someone here who has that level of awareness, not that no one here has it, but to that extent, to that high level. And what do I mean? We speak about the economy. We speak about the coming food shortage. We speak about the coming collapse of the uh, economy and the reset. We speak about the war and what it means to us, even though we know that that's not our fight. Well, their fight is going to affect us. And it's quite refreshing to have someone that is aware of that. So, you know, when you're dealing on a, on a financial level, you know, you're paying somebody for the services or goods and you don't really know, 
you know, the content of your heart or the depth of your mind. And then a word slips out. And then another word, you give it back and you find yourself, you say, wow, this person knows a lot. And so when we had that conversation, that first conversation that went deep, she said, Lance, I could not believe the things that you said. Not that I never heard it before, but I think just like you. And this is amazing to me because there are many people in my circle that don't agree or even understand what I'm trying to say. And I said, I'm right there with you. I understand. And she says, not only that, what about the sense of urgency needed to, you know, do what we, what we must do because this world is becoming artificial. It's changing. It's being so controlled. She says here in Ghana, I was born and raised. I was born and raised in the Volta region at the highest peaks. We have the richest soil. And we, I can see the change in the world from this standpoint. Where are you coming from, New York City? It's all beautiful and it's all good. But I see certain changes that I don't like. And I don't like where we're going. And I sure don't like where we're going as a people. I was like, wow, that sounds just like me. That sounds just like me back in America before I came here. But these factors that are so destructive to our existence are here. It might be a lot milder, but they're all in place. So we spoke about many of the things that we just recently spoke about on the Irritated Genie Show, which, like I said, not being funny, but that's what got us banned. And it's a, ban a badge of honor for me. It's a great badge of honor for me for, for, for them to come and seek me out. That means that we're doing something good, that we're speaking on something good. Although they said that, well, you spoke on the COVID virus and the vaccines and how it didn't work. So it's medical misinformation. So we have to take it down to keep a safe environment for our platform. Translation, we're putting out propaganda and we don't want the truth that you're speaking to reach the minds of the masses. That's all it is. So this is why we have our own independent platform. We've, we've always had it. And so we're going to utilize it more. And just like YouTube enforces their rules, we're going to enforce our rules over here to keep everybody on the channel right here. We'll do YouTube, but when, when it gets hot, eh, 15, 20 minutes, come on over to landscurve.com. So for those who are not here and they're hearing this now and you've been asking, well, I didn't know where you were. You were gone for a few days, again, for like the thou thousandth time, I'll say, when you don't see us, go to landscurve.com. But it's going to go in one ear for most and come out the next. So we don't even fret that because those are the same people who are not going to really take heed as to the signs that are going on out there. Listen, y'all, if y'all got to drop weight, drop weight. If you need to walk and get your body right, you don't have to be an Olymp Olympic athlete but be able to handle yourself, be able to run, be able to climb a fence, be able to do certain things. Watch what you're eating. Get your mind right. Get off of these amenities that you think are luxuries, but they're deadening something in you. Release this stuff. Be ready to live without. I'm already there. There's not much in this life that titillates me where I have to have it. I enjoy certain things now, but I look at it like a movie that I'm watching that's soon going to be over. This is not going to last forever. I'll be out of this movie theater soon. And, and the sad part is that for many people who are so caught up in this system, especially when you get to my age or in that age group, the middle age group, that upper middle age group, it's going to be the hardest part of their lives. So many people have been spoiled for decades not to know what it's like to be disciplined they think they're disciplined, but when overnight com comes, it's going to just happen quick. It's not where we're going to gradually just work you in on this. So many factors, <clears throat> so many factors are moving toward this reset. But when it really pops, it's going to pop. And you better find yourself where you're supposed to be. The speculation and the planning is over. You should be there already. Your mind should be there. And even though I find myself where I want to be, there's a sense of urgency like I've had no other time in my life. The foolishness has to cut. One day these shows are not going to be going on. One day there may not be a YouTube. And if it, if it is, if you have prior <laughs> convictions of being shut down, they won't even allow you, like having bad credit. The bank is not going to allow you a nice loan if in the past, You've defaulted or had bad credit. 
or didn't pay your bills. Censorship is here. Cancel culture is here. We can't get around that. But I'm going to not rant on that too much longer because this show is not going to be a five-hour show. We get right to the point and get off. That preserves me and that keeps it interesting for you. But the bottom line is that time is moving on. And time, I may add, is an artificial construct. I always say that. For this particular life and this particular level, it's something that we are forced to heed because we have to be at places in our jobs on time. We have to be to the doctor's appointment on time. It, it's a prearranged uh, uh, set of uh, coordinates that we have to uh, obey because there are people that I know that if you say to be somewhere 10 o'clock, you don't, they don't show up until 2.30 and they're looking at you while you're a little angry like, hey, I could have did something with that time. But on a spiritual level, time doesn't exist. On the next transition, if we do things right and end up in the good place, time doesn't exist. It's a matter of being, not time. Vibration, not time. If there is something called a time, it's because you vibrated. But it's not a clock. So we need to practice this. That even on this level, we don't need to look at clocks if we don't have to. Of course, if you have to meet somebody at a certain time, you better use that clock. But other than that, we, sh we should get into a timeless way of living with a sense of urgency. The pressing forward toward our goals should be what we focus on. Not sitting down, thinking we have time, taking our time, acting like we don't know the reset is coming. It's got to be something we press on within. But really and truly, it'll be a beautiful time because it'll be a much simpler life. The powers that be expected to be something very uncomfortable for most of us, and for most of us, it will. Even if you're 95% there and can't seem to shake that 5% of a shackle of something you're hooked on. You know, I love vegan ice cream. And I found several places that sell it. But it had an ingredient in there that I discovered that just was not good for me. And guess what? I let it go. I was halfway through a container of this vegan ice cream. I threw it away. I got rid of it. There's one thing off the list. This is a time of letting go. And if you can't let go, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to have to be let, you're going to have to let go of certain practices. You're going to have to let go of certain expectations that are not necessary. You're going to have to let go of certain people. You're going to have to let go of certain things. You're going to have to be in a higher state of being, which basically you need to be not because you want to unwise yourself, let's make a word up, but you want to be the same way that you were when you came into this world as a child. You were naked. I'm not saying run around naked, but pretty much naked to the things and, and dis, disconnected to the things that you began to learn and, and get used to and crave those things. We better get used to get letting those things go because when we leave out of here, we're going to leave out of here the same way. And these attachments that we have, have no place on the next level. The gold chain that's sentimental to you, that ring that's sentimental to you, that house that's sentimental to you, that you love, that TV show that you love, that food that you love has no bearing on the next level after transition. So if you got to hold on to these things and don't want to let go, you're only making for a painful transition because you're going to have to get ripped away. You will get ripped away from these things and you will be on the next level. But if you have to be ripped away from it, you might not make it. It's like jumping from one tall building to a next. And it may be a five foot leap between buildings, a tall building, 50 stories high, imagine. And it's a, five foot distance from one to the other that if you take a running start you can make but guess what if you hold on to bags of possessions and things that you want to carry with you to the next building as you leap from one rooftop to the next you're probably not going to make it because you'll be weighted down 
You'll be weighed down and not able to make it to the next level. Is that what you want? For things that you can't hold on to anyway? That it weighs you down and keeps you from getting to the next level? And like I say, you know, getting older makes you see life so much more differently. You just see it a whole lot more different. And there are many of us that get to a certain chronological age and we still don't get it. We're still with the old games. We, we just never evolve and never change. And that's just as bad as holding on to things on this level because we are supposed to develop. It's just like when you're going through what they call school, really the school of schools of indoctrination, right? But the bottom line with that is that you go to first grade, second grade, third grade, so on and so forth. And guess what? You should be developing at a certain rate to graduate, to go to the next grade. If you don't graduate and learn the work properly, well, you won't graduate. Then you won't make it to the next level. So imagine that. But after we let go out of school, our personal development is not monitored like that. Either you continue on to ascend, to make yourself better as expected. And if you don't, well, there's no law that says that you have to personally, but you're going to feel the consequences of it. You're going to feel the consequences of being an idiot. I'm sorry to say it that way, but some of us are straight idiots. We're very intelligent idiots. We've mastered the scholastic end of things, but we have not mastered the awareness that it takes to navigate through this often shark-infested waters of this world, which is a beautiful place. Because like I always say, there are two worlds here that we're in. We have the man-made world, the engineered world, the world that doesn't bring us any joy, where we have to jump through hoops and get to work on time and pay bills for things that were given to us by our creator for free. And we have that world given to us by the creator where the food grows freely, abundance, land, no property lines and no surveyors. You live here in this area, I live there, and we respect each other. Paying for land, paying for something that's always been here. Some man elected himself to be a God beside God, and you got to pay him and, 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 and pay this mortgage. Therefore, now you got to go to the next man and get a job and get money. That's a dead manifestation of your life force and pay this next man for the mortgage. You want a car? Well, you got to pay for that too. Instead of us all working together, knowing that we have things free, but we give in abundance of our life force to each other. That person who knows how to heal in the village, let him take care of everybody who gets sick. That person who knows how to build a wall, well, every wall should be built by him and he should teach the youngsters how to do it to carry on his trade. Anybody who knows how to fix a roof or build a home and put a roof on, they should take care of it all with no problem and teach the youth to do it. No, no transfer of money is needed. We need to barter off our skills and give freely. And like I said before, that elderly woman who in the engineered society would usually be lonely and ailing until they find her one day, transitioned and decomposing. That's, that's not a good thought, but that's what happens. Why is it that our elders get to the sweetest time of their life and it usually becomes the worst time is because we live in an engineered society where there's no use for them. When in other cultures, they're the most valued thing around. You go to them for guidance. You go to them for help. But in our society, this engineered society of the present day, in the so-called civilized parts of the world, we don't need them. They're in the way. We dash them away to what they call an assisted living facility, a.k.a. the senior citizens' old folks' home, waiting for death, feeling as though they have no value. And that is a sin, and that is to show you that our society is not advanced, that it would throw away the most important part of our lives. How are we going to have guidance? We're going to repeat the same mistakes over again without our elders. Sure, we know they're not as strong as they used to be. 
They shouldn't be because they're more powerful than anyone in that village with what they know. And we need to soak that knowledge in because usually they were taught by their elders and they accrued some experience to put on top of that while we go out strong with our backs strong and full of youth. And we make major mistakes in our life in this engineered system because we're disconnected from our elders who are dashed away in an old folks home. Isn't that something? How arrogant we've become. How, how self-sufficient away from the other members of our village. We're at work all day. We bring our children to the schools of the enemy. And they teach our children to be diametrically opposed to us in our culture and our practices. And our children grow up looking at our culture and practices as though it's something from the Stone Age as though it's something that's no good, that, that, that the, the time for that is over. We don't need to indulge in those things anymore because we've advanced. You see, as much as this society has advanced on a technological level, on a medical field level, to know so much about the human body, yet and still, We are dropping dead like flies with all kinds of diseases because we don't know and have gotten away from the original way. We've gotten away from that thing that brings us life. We've gotten away from that thing that brings us joy, unity and togetherness and a love righteously for one one another brings us that joy. Imagine us all together working out on the fields working out wherever we are needed. It doesn't have to be the fields, but helping each other out on a medical level, on a scholastic level, on a spiritual level, on a, on a marriage counseling level that we just give freely. We don't need the enemy's money. We are so afraid to be parting with the enemy's money. Get your things in your hand. And collectively in that village, if you do not have, it should be where we all pitch in so you do have. Don't worry about that. If you have, you're supposed to help your brother and sister as long as they're willing to bring their elbow grease and their their expertise and, and their essence to the pot and put it to the pot, put it in front. Let us share our life force. That's what it's all about. But usually we don't understand that until we get older. And this is why I say getting older makes us see life a whole lot different. Because we can check ourselves and say, wow, if I only knew. How many of us out here who are listening and who will listen have had that thought that you got on a job that you shouldn't have gotten on? It wasn't a perfect fit. That you've gotten in a relationship or a marriage that did more harm than good. Because you know, when you marry someone, you also marry their family, whether you like it or not. How many times have we made a move financially and it was just one big disaster, but we were coerced into that by people who had no clue. How many times were we going to make a good financial move, but we have a spouse who had no clue and ran with other people as though they're the scholars, but what the other people said brings them no, no, it doesn't bring them any, any fruits. Isn't that something? Hindsight is 2020, and getting older sure makes you see life different. It could be a hurtful thing when you went or get to a certain age and you realize that you couldn't recuperate or you haven't recuperated from the bad decisions that you made. And now you're at this point, and you could sense it. It's something about getting to a certain age where you can sense that the curtains are soon coming to a close. Even when you're up and healthy, you've seen the passage of time enough to know that this thing is not going to last forever. And this thing called life is so precious. And maybe I might have spent much of it running after things that others said were important, but really are not important at all. Realizing that a lot of the man-made illusions of this world were just that, illusions. 
And we spent years running after it to get this status, a status that doesn't matter, a status that doesn't arm you for transition. For me, I see my mortality every single day. And all I do require is respect and peace. Respect and peace. If you can tell me to my face that you don't respect me, or you can act in a way that shows me that you can't respect me in the position that I have in this life and in your life, in whatever capacity I am, you need to get away from me. Be away from me because there's no connection. And too many of us settle for less. Too many of us to not be alone. We tolerate things from acquaintances and friends and spouses that they do to us time and time again. And we say, man, I never knew it would be this way. But now that I've gotten older, it's easy to let these things go because ultimately I'm going to have to let all of this go. It's called the joy of letting go. I remember many, many decades ago, I saw a book with that very phrase on its cover, the joy of letting go. And as a young boy, because I was always asking questions, as a young boy, I said, what does this mean, the joy of letting go? Does it mean you go to the, to the park and get on the seesaw, or get on the swing and swing all the way up high, back and forth, and then let go <laughs> and fall and hurt yourself? Does that mean that? Or you get behind the wheel of a car and you speed and go real fast and then you just let go of everything, let it go where it wants to go. Well, that's going to leave you wrapped around the tree now, wouldn't it? But as I got older, I understood what that was all about, the joy of letting go. And maybe I should have titled this particular episode that way, but when I do shows and conversations and monologues, I go all over the place. So there could be four or five different titles that you can make for this. But the joy of letting go of toxic people, the joy of letting go of situations that hold you back, the joy of letting go of the things that stop you from manifesting the seeds of greatness inside of you, that brings you the biggest fulfillment. But now that you're older, you realize that because getting older makes you see life so much different. And hopefully when you come to this realization, you'll understand that you still have a little bit of time left. Of course, it's an artificial construct. So now you don't need to waste any more time. You don't need to waste any more time babysitting entities that are so toxic to you. You don't need to waste any time trying to convince someone of something that they need to be doing, but you're not saying it out of a controlling manner or trying to be condescending. You sincerely see this, but they refuse and reject. So if now it's time for me to invest in something, I don't mean just money, but something that's going to give me something back and you can't see it. I can't waste my time trying to convince you. But at the end of the day, if you rejected all that I've brought to you, that would be good. Don't waste my time begging me for what I have gained when you could have done the same thing too. And that's where I stand right now. I'm just as loving, I'm just as giving, but I don't have any time to waste on foolishness. I wanna transition properly and I wanna end up in life where I'm supposed to be to at least enjoy some of it with peace of mind and respect. And if you can't give me that, then don't be surprised when you are not a part of my world. Not that you want to be, no. But I'll tell you one thing. When you distance yourself and disrespect people who are good people, you're going to miss out on a whole lot. And that's why I would never want to do that. And for the toxic people who seek to bring you down, getting older allows you to see them even more. Isn't that something? I mean, I can see. It's almost like the song. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Doo -doo, doo -doo. <laughs> I can see all obstacles in my way. I understood even back then what she meant 
when she sung those words, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. And because I'm one who speaks very, very much with analogies, it clicked with me then. I know she wasn't just talking about rain. She was talking about the entities and energies in her life that are gone now. And she can see clearly. She can breathe better. She can see better. She can hear better. She can see all obstacles in her way to know how to avoid them. Those toxic people who smile in your face and only want to use you to ease their own financial burden because they know that you have a little more money than them. So of course they're going to treat you nice. Those people who don't want to see you rise above where they are because they don't have any faith. I'll use that word, but it's not strong enough. They don't have the knowing of knowing if they do certain practices righteously according to this universe and the universal code, that they will make gain, they will get there. But they don't know that. So they have relegated themselves to live a mediocre life. And it's an insult to them that you seek to go higher, that you crave more, that you crave to work the universal principles of progress. That's an insult to them. You didn't know that when you were younger because you, you thought that they were your friends. You know how we addressed each other. Oh, hello, my sister. Hello, my brother. They love that because they got their hands in your pocket. Or they know they can get good favor with you and make it easier on themselves. A leech doesn't hate the host. This is why when a leech is sucking on you, he will suck on you in a place where you can't see. The leech is not going to get on you and get on the back of your hand. You'll see the leech. You'll understand why you feel drained because you're being drained. But they're going to get on your leg near your backside where you can't see. They're going to get on the back of your arm, the back of your neck, the back of your leg and leech right there. The leech never announces his presence and says, well, thank you so much. I've been sucking your blood for the next 30 days and you're so drained. I'm going to continue on. And when you die, I'm going to move on to the next one. But we don't see that. Because getting older is something that affords us a vision to let, let us know when things aren't right. And I think the saddest thing is when we get older, it doesn't necessarily cause us to be an elder. And that's the mistake that many younger folks in our society, we make that mistake. You know, you're a young lady and you, you're going to school and you have that person who's a tutor in your neighborhood and it's a man and they have gray hair and you know that you can go to him to pick up on certain studies that you need to brush up so you can pass those tests and those areas that you've fallen behind on. And so you go there and you're going to compensate them. And once you're there for a few times, here he is looking at you a certain way that doesn't make you feel comfortable. Maybe he tries to put his hand on you in a way that's questionable, but he continues to do it. And it's obvious what's on his mind for all the gray hair that he has that older is not an elder and we need to make those who are older earn the status of being an elder and if they can't do that you must relegate them to a place where the world knows what they're all about there are many people men and women who do that they they will take the props of being an elder but they're nowhere near that it's just like we have many people who take the props of being something that they're not. But in our infancy and in our youth, we don't see it. It takes a few knocks and a few times to be knocked down. And unfortunately, there are some of us who know how to stroke our egos and stroke our subconscious minds so much that we just give in because it feels good for somebody to have a familiar background or a familiar hobby or a same like in music. And they get into our system that way. 
they get on us in an unholy manner as a leech because we were too young to understand what their proximity was to us in life. And that's the way it is. And lots of times when we're younger, we can recuperate from the mismanagement of our time or the mismanagement of who we know we need to be around. We just get around people because we like them. And there are people who cause us to artificially like them, but they have an end in mind, a secret agenda or a hidden motivation. But we don't know that. And then as we get older and have time behind us, just as much as we have time ahead of us, some of us catch on. But some of us get to some ripe older ages and realize I've been a damn fool all my life. I've had a weakness all my life and I've allowed people to use me for their benefit. But I didn't see this until I got older. And we have some people who can recuperate from that. They make amends, they make a change of what needs to be done. And the more severe the situation, where you're fo so far off the mark, is the more severe of a correction that you must make. You know when you're on the road and a dog or a cat or a child runs out on the road, and you have to turn that wheel while hitting the brake three times to the left? You spin that wheel three times fast. Thank the creator for power steering. But then now, after you avoid that child and you're heading on to the oncoming traffic of the opposite side, you better recorrect now and turn it back three and three and a half times to get back on course. And so many of us react to things that are happening to us, but we forget afterward to correct ourselves back. So we're back on course. So these things that happen to us have an effect on our mind and our lives. And we never seem to get back on course. But after a couple of decades of living life, you kind of figure it out. But just like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, it's a shame that by the time we figure life out, it's almost time to go. So if we can share the knowledge with our youngsters, that maybe they will listen to us. And hopefully they will. Those are the ones who will have an advanced life where they reach a certain point faster and accomplish more, not just make the mistakes of living a mediocre life where they're working for somebody and they're paying their bills and they're working for somebody and they're paying their bills and they can't do anything with the seeds of greatness that they have within them because they didn't listen when they were younger or they didn't have any people around them to teach them better. They just taught them to be a wage slave. Go to work, go to work, go to work, come home, go to work. Nothing more. We got to break the mold. We can't have the next generation come behind us with that mentality. Getting older makes you see life different, but it means nothing if you only see it different. You got to get out there and have conversations. You got to show the youth something different. Same action, same effort, same result. Look at those of us who have worked on these jobs for so many decades, and we have a piece of a house that we sell, and we have an emotional attachment to it. And when you're sitting there, when you're selling the house, and you have the lawyers on your side, and you have the lawyers on the other side, and you're at the closing, and something you, you've lived for all of your life that you've Gone and taking care of the yard. You made sure the premises were painted. You put the brand new windows in and doors. You took pride. They don't give a damn about that. They are chopping up your life right in front of you. Well, this house is worth $250,000 and we have to pay $100,000 for the uh, mortgage uh, that, that wasn't paid. And we have back taxes and then you have a lien on your property because you took out a second mortgage and you bought that vehicle. So we got to pay back that lien of hundred or $65,000. And with this particular thing, the fees, our fees is this and this and this and that, whatever, whatever. And you look around and you got $20,000. That's all you got. You took a lifetime thinking that you were building something. And whatever the reason was, you decided to sell that house. Now, most people might get a little more than that. I reduced the number because to show you that we think we have all of this and all of that, and we really don't. And then you go on 
more now. You take your little $20,000 and you move to a place where money stretches. And you say, man, look at this. I use this little bit of money. That's nothing from where, where I come from. And now I have more and I don't have a mortgage to pay. This is a valuable lesson. So now you see life better since you've gotten older. You've ran the rat race. You thought you were getting somewhere, but you were really running on the treadmill that spun around and around, never allowing you to leave that particular point in space and time. And you were stuck. And it's just a thing where now you see that you can truly live, but you have to be able to let go. It's a thing really in the mind. And we get to a certain age, hopefully. And again, I'm seeing more and more people who are older, who are just as much as fools as when they were young. They look at you crazy. When you break things down to them logically, look at this and see how this affected this and look at history, how this was and what happened in history with these different factors. It's going to happen again real soon. And these people look at you. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm watching the TV show later on. I got my show coming on. We got some pork to eat. We ain't going to watch the, all that crazy stuff you talk about. That ain't going to happen. But they'll turn around now. You know, and refer to the Bible. Or maybe some of these people would, were in the Bible for so many decades telling you when there was going to be wars and rumors of wars, pestilence, famine, disease. But what do you see now more than ever before? What happened to you Bible thumpers who are telling us and threatening us that we better get our lives right? Now it's here and you're not equipped for it because you weren't really into it. You just use it as a weapon to beat other people down to feel superior. Not everybody, but too many people. If you knew about this long before I did and you were telling me decades ago, why didn't you get your life right? You're older and you don't see life a certain way. So we got to big up the people that have gotten older and who've gotten truly matured to be able to pass on information that's relevant for us because they spent time. If you're not aware at this point in your life, the time you spent on this earth having all of these experiences don't mean a damn thing if it can't help you and it can't help the people around you. It doesn't mean anything. You've wasted time. You weren't paying attention in the classroom of life because there's nothing that's going to be on that test that you didn't experience in the classroom. I'm speaking symbolically because if you didn't listen, didn't pay attention, didn't keep your eyes open and read the signs on what that teacher was telling you in the form of experiences in this life, you'll have nothing except regret and dread and a bad feeling as it's time to transition. Because when it's time to transi transition, it's okay to have made mistakes. It's okay to have had major foul ups, but did you correct it? Did you correct your outlook? Because we know that in this life, you're going to suffer the consequences of your bad decisions. You can get away from it for a little while. You can do things to people for a little while. You can slander people for a little while. You can have envy in your heart for people for a little while, but it's going to weigh you down. It's going to take you out. It's going to be the thing to pull you down when you leap from that one building to the next, but you're holding on to all this toxic stuff. Big up to my dear sister. We were speaking all day today, and I hope you feel better because you have some allergies and sinus issues. But we were speaking on such a deep level. And I said sometimes that when you have toxic people around you, and toxic situations around you and venomous people around you who are in your pockets to make you feel that when you do something for you, you need to do something for them. 
No. When you have these people around you and you're doing the righteous practices to maintain your health on so many levels, on a mental level, on a spiritual level, and on a physical level, if you're around these people too much, your spiritual, mental, and physical filters will be clogged. And you wonder why you have migraine headaches because you've always kept these kind of people around you. You wonder why physically you're under the weather. It's because of these people around you with the energies that they possess with a smile on their face. Spiritual sickness and toxicity can translate into physical sickness for you. And you say to yourself, I didn't go outside after a shower when it was cold and freezing. I wasn't even around anybody or crowds of people where they're sneezing and coughing. I keep my home clean. There's nothing I can touch that would allow me to become sick. What is it? I don't understand why. Do you understand why or how there are so many different factors that are fighting against our well-being? So to finally live in balance and to understand how to keep ourselves in balance, don't you understand what a victory that is to know yourself? I know at least two or three days before I fall sick that I'm heading in that direction and then I know I need to do things to correct myself like that steering wheel that we had to turn to avoid that person or child or, or that animal that ran out on the road. I got I, I to gotta avoid this thing and I've got to recorrect, turn it back the other way and get deeper back into the practices that I know will keep me in a state of balance. But don't you know if you're balancing something and something's standing on the same piece of wood that's on that little circular uh, uh, thing that you're rocking on back and forth, and they jump on, you've got to adjust your balance to accommodate them. So when they use you and jump off, you're not in your own balance, you're in balance to maintain them. And when they jump off or you get them off of you and you get this bad toxic relationship off of you, you better be careful because you got rid of them, but you're so used to pulling their weight and balancing their weight that now you're out of balance and you don't have your own sense of balance and you usually fall and hit the ground symbolically. So we got to really, really be careful. And we got to understand that we've got to embrace years as they go by. Nobody wants to think that they're getting older and their bodies are going to kind of, you know, hit that high age and we're going to have a different kind of beauty. But we, not, we shouldn't be afraid of this thing called old age. Show your beautiful face. Smile. Exude the spirit that you've understood all of your life that you found yourself in this place of balance. We have so many beautiful young people out here that appear to have it all but they're walking around for many years in a state of imbalance. And of course, there are older people the same way. But it's very shocking when you see someone in their early 20s, in their early 30s, in their early 40s, have a great career, a home life that's so seemingly happy. And you say to yourself, they have it all. But all of a sudden, you're watching a TV program or you're on your favorite website and something else pops up, breaking news. This particular person put a gun to their head and pulled the trigger because they were out of balance. They weren't really feeling joy in life. You see them from the outside and you kind of put that on them. They've got to be happy. They got my dream car, that Rolls Royce, that Bentley. They have three of them. So they should be three times as happy. Does that really make them happy? Does that really make them love and accept themselves? Does that really make them feel centered in the world that's so imbalanced? Where they don't feel like they fit in? Where they never got to know themselves? And when they find themselves, 
they usually don't like what they see. So getting older is not a bad thing, but you got to know how to do it right. You have to know that you're not going to look the way you did when you were 20 years old, when you're 70, but for 70, you can look really good for your 70 years old. As long as you do at that level of life, the right thing for yourself, always take care of yourself. Number one, always be true to yourself. Number two, and always make sure that you get out of your life those things that bring you down. But if it's taking you out of balance, if it has you arguing every day with your spouse from their mere presence, you need to get rid of them or they're going to destroy you what you have and they'll be there to pick up the pieces of the things that you leave behind because that's what they wanted all along. You can identify the leeches so much easier in this life. When you get to a point of mastering yourself, self-mastery, if you master yourself, you can conquer anything. Stop looking outside of yourself for the answer. Yeah, there are things you can learn if you have a particular project that you're trying to tackle. You're not going to sit here and say, you know, I want to build this structure in my backyard. Let me look within. Of course, you're going to have to learn how it's done but you're going to have to master yourself and get the discipline that it takes to do something like that. I've always been a person to have mastered myself, even in my most hedonistic of days. When it came time to stop and do what I had to do, all the festivities I cut myself off from. But many people don't know how to do that. So as you get older and you haven't mastered yourself, you feel a sense of hopelessness. You feel a sense of being out of control because now you're getting these aches and pains. You didn't have them before and they don't go away. Well, you can find yourself back in balance, but usually when you feel something now, it's because you started a practice or neglected something from 10, 15 years ago. So wherever you are now, please take care of yourself. It's going to show up and it's going to be there with you. If you don't take care of it ahead of time, because just like in that beautiful conversation that we had at the shop across the street from where I live, I stated to them that being sick is not normal. To be in a state of dis-ease is not normal. That tells you that you've been doing something that has thrown you off and you've got to change something drastically to bring yourself back to balance. You shouldn't be in a state of dis-ease. You should be in a state of ease. No matter what is thrown at you, you should be in that state where you're still ascending. And the way it should be is that you live a long, happy life. Of course, there are things in the environment that we can't change. They're trying to kill us off, population control. But like was stated earlier in the conversation, they're doing everything on this planet to get rid of us even when they have casualties that look like their own. They don't care about those by any means necessary. They must get rid of the black man and woman off the face of the planet Earth. No matter how they make it seem like, oh, it's a world thing, and this is what we must do. It's about you. As soon as I found out about this thing in Wuhan, China, I knew they were going to bring it around to black people. They're amping these numbers up and trying to scare you to take this thing. Now, I better be careful. I'm going to be banned again when this is, once this goes up, right? But I really don't care right now. We have our own platform here, and we're going to talk. We can't be like scared little toddlers after the mother said, go to sleep. And you have a couple cribs in that room, and you're making these crazy noises and jumping up. No. I, I wasn't born to be afraid. I don't know what it's like to be afraid. Do what you must do to try to put fear in my heart, but don't get mad when I'm not afraid. I'm just a stubborn old something. And that's how I was born and raised. I always spoke the truth. It's like in third grade, in a so-called history part of the day, history class, we were focused on history. And I asked the teacher, a Jewish lady named Miss Rubenow, I said, Miss Rubenow, Christopher Columbus discovered America? 
And she said, yes, he did. He's quite a great man. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here. I said, really? I said, so can I ask you a question? It may seem personal, but it's not. I'm not trying to be funny. She said, go ahead and ask, Lance. You've always been a gentleman. I said, if I come over to your house this Saturday and you're there occupying that house and I walk inside your house and tell you that I discovered this for myself, would you feel funny? And would you resist me? And maybe if I had the weaponry and the manpower and the skills to overtake you, does that mean that that's my house? It means you stole it. That's enough, Lance. We need to get outside the classroom and talk. Where did you get this stuff from? Why are you talking this stuff? You know Christopher Columbus discovered America. I said, no, I didn't. That's what you say. But how can you discover something that's already occupied? Can I take somebody's woman when they're walking down the street, holding hands? Oh, I discovered this woman. Come on, woman. You're coming back to my place, and we're going to have some hot sex right now. She doesn't know me. She's not doing that. I can't steal from somebody something they have. I discovered your brand new car, and you see an empty parking space out there. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense, and we've got to stop accepting these falsehoods, or we're not going to age gracefully. You see an older person out there looking cranky. They might smile, but the wrinkles in their face and the look in their face falls into something that shows you the mark on them. Come on now. You know you was at the red light one day and you see these two old lesbians walking by. You knew they were lesbians. There's nothing feminine about them. When they get old like that, they might have been a femme when they were younger and one was a butch. Let's be real. But they get older and the mark is on them because they've been living like that for so long. There's something barren about them in their look. Dried up. They didn't use their female parts the way it should have been used. Estrogen, estrogen, no testosterone, no penis, no man. They're imbalanced. I'm sorry if you want to live a lie and live in a delusional way. But that's just the way things are. And that this whole planet is imbalanced. And those who are going to survive and enjoy their older years are the ones who see life a certain way and learn their lessons and submit it to that. I don't have to know exactly on a molecular level how a mango is made or a watermelon is made or collard greens or collaloo or potatoes in the ground are made. But I know it's tailor-made for me. And I know that when I consume these items, they're good for me. But if you tamper with them, they're no good for me. Simple as that. So we got to get back to the older practices. Because just like a friend of mine many years told me when I was younger, he says, you know what, Lance? You're young now, but you're going to be more old on this life if you live a long life than when you were young. And now I understand that now. And I think for one that I may not have gone all out to preserve myself. I've done enough in my life that people still tell me, well, you know, Lance, you don't look your age. And really and truly, if we do right, we should never look our age. Because what's accepted as far as standards are concerned are so below par, so far below the mark, that when we see someone who halfway did it right, it's shocking. Oh my God, you're 59 years old soon? Look at your face. What about it? Isn't this the way it's supposed to be? I've been submitting to certain natural law laws for a long time because in my age and I'm getting older, it makes me see what I need to do. You can't keep bucking the system of nature and expect to win on all levels. You're going to lose out. But I tell you, there's so much in this world that we have to learn and embrace. But we have to understand what it is. Again, two worlds, the natural, the one that nourishes us and keeps us, the one that was meant for us to keep us looking young and in shape for a long time. We have that engineered world where everything is GMO. Everything is diametrically opposed to the natural world to stress us out, to have us overweight, to have us toxic on each other, to have us 
headaches and nervous breakdowns and suicide and just torment and fear. I remember back in Orlando when I used to leave in the early afternoon to go to work. And I wasn't stressed, I would say. I was pressed to get certain things done. I got to pay this bill. I got to take this money and use this and use this. And you, it was never really enough. There'd be some beautiful days. You, I'm going to work. Ain't there something? You ever have a day that's so beautiful and you're on your way to work? You're like, man, why I got to go to work? You mad. On the commute, half sleep. I should have stayed in the bed for two more hours. Got up and went into the park or just went in my yard. I used to have those thoughts all the time. I said, somewhere in the world, there's somebody enjoying themselves in nature without a care in the world. And here I am going to this blinking bus company to drive up and down and pick up people in the street, which it was a good thing because it enhanced my knowledge of human nature and my daily dealings. But who wants to deal with that all the time? And there was that cat laying back on my lawn, eyes closing like a heroin addict, nodding out. Stomach was full, must have ate a bunch of lizards that day. But it's like the cat was looking at me. <laughs> hey, fool. I see you back in that car at the driveway. You a dumbass. While you go to work for the artificial manifestations of life force called, called, called money, I'm really living life. I don't have to go anywhere. Look at all this free food running around. I think I might take some lizards, another two or three to fill my belly again. There's so much I can eat around here because I'm in nature's system. I'm on your land, but I'm enjoying it. And it's not really your land. I've been running across this thing, my family for generations. There's a lake over there. It brings all types of life forms to eat. I can take a bath in it. I can drink. I'm living. So go on and punch your clock thinking that you own this because you don't even own the time in your life. Ain't that something? That's amazing to me. But getting older has really and truly helped me to see things so much different, and so much better. And if you can just separate yourself from the propaganda that has been put in your mind, getting older is not such a bad thing. Because like I said, getting older makes life look so different. And if you come to that realization and you have that inner joy, you'll realize that when you're older, it's really the best part of your life. Lance Curve out. On to the next one. Salute to my brothers. Much love to my sisters. We'll be back tomorrow. Our YouTube ban is but a few more days, four or five more days. It will be back on track, but it will always be about landscurve.com. So even when we come back to YouTube, we'll only be there for a few minutes before we come back over here. And we're going to make sure to do some really dynamic shows. It's been a pleasure. I'm going to turn in and go to sleep right now. I have to get up very, very early, which is a pleasure, and start a brand new adventurous day. Because we don't know who we're going to meet. We don't know what kind of conversation that we're going to have. We don't know what we'll learn. So if you're not looking forward to it the next day, out of a sense of adventure and enjoyment and wonderment, like a child going out into the world that has 50 million questions for the parents, and they're learning and they're seeing and they're vibing. If you start each day feeling doomed, feeling worn out, feeling like there's nothing more for you to gain or do or learn in this world, you might as well just pick a coffin, dig a hole, jump in it, and jump in the coffin because you are officially the living dead. You're just merely alive. You're not living. And that, my friend, my brothers and sisters, is not what this life is all about. Much love to you all. Peace out. Take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the heat. 
I'm trying to do more for the soul, way less for the bread. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the head. I see the things that they do, way less than they say. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Can't be a real nigga, might get you canceled. Fuck the whole system, need the shit dismantled. Coppers treat a nigga like the utmost wanted. Trying to rule the block, but don't know what goes on me. Dude's got a story with a new take on me. Carrying out the window with the screw face on me. But I know that God love me when my blunt burn. 95 degrees and I can't get sunburned. Wonder when your government will make me legal. Burn the whole city if I can't be equal. Get off my dick, please, Brad, I earned that. 400 years, how you still ain't learned that? I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the head. I'm trying to do more for the soul, way less for the bread. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the head. I see the things that they do, way less than they say. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Shout out to the crackers trying to gentrify the genre. Tell them free my niggas, middle finger to your honor. In the days coming down, the seconds on the timer. Goofy niggas still trying to purchase that designer. About to buy a chopper, learn to grow my own food. Cause I don't like the look that get me in the whole foods. And when you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. But it ain't on me now, I'm limping cause my dick heavy. But ain't shit sweet, niggas think we thin. My whole attitude on MC Ren. It's my neighborhood now, bye bye bye. Bought that 400 years, how you still ain't caught that? I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the head. I'm trying to do more for the soul, way less for the bread. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the head. I see the things that they do, way less than they say. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out.